Hello, and welcome to Sobercast. We provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in a podcast format. We are an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting Sobercast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into the virtual basket. Also, if you're a member of NA or have friends that are, please tell them about our other podcast, NAPOD. NAPOD features NA speakers and workshops in the same format as Sobercast. We upload a new speaker every day, and it's easy to subscribe by searching for NAPOD, N-A-P-O-D, all one word, on any podcast player app, or go to NAPOD.XYZ if you'd like to listen online. Hope you enjoy the podcast and have a great day. Good evening. My name is Billy. I'm an alcoholic. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Wayne, for asking me. And thanks for the three guys sharing, the Duchess and the two lads. It was lovely to hear you both. Um, just thinking, I don't know if there's anybody new here. I'm just going to do one drinking episode. Just one. This is one day's drinking for me on a Friday. Okay? I was drinking all day long. Pub in Camden Town, where I was born. The capital of Ireland. If anyone knows Ireland. Or Cap- Camden, anyway. That's where I was born. And this day drinking, I was spent a whole day at it. And I came back into the pub. And the barmaid said to me, did you notice anything different? I said, no. She said, well, yesterday, you was in here all day. I said, yeah, I remember that. She said, you came back in at about 20 past two, and you left at 20 past three. And I said, yeah, what's the problem about that marriage? She said, you was in here for that hour, and in that hour, you had 19 vodkas. She said, and when you left, you took half a bottle with you. Now, that's just to identify the fact I'm a chronic alcoholic. Okay, that's, that, that's the finish of my drinking. I'm not going to bore you with that. A recovery and what these guys are sharing about. I love it. Absolutely love this recovery. I went to my first meeting in October 1974 and the meeting's still going. I went to this meeting and I heard them say, do you want what we have? And I thought, no. You're all old. You're all grey. I thought, why would I want what you've got? You know, I didn't understand. And I didn't get sober to 1976, the hot summer of 76. And it's different today because... There was no mobiles. You could smoke in the meetings in them days. Some of the meetings you couldn't see the other side of the room. It was that bad, you know. Um, <laughs> but when, when I think back to that and the way this has changed, with the steps and the tr- for me, that's how it works. And that's why it works. It's that simple. No ifs or buts. I was told about that and I said this at the meeting the other day. The same home group as Jenny. You know, steps one, two and three. I shared this the other day. Step one, two and three. I can't, he can, so let him. And I thought, bloody hell, that's simple. That's pretty simple. But with the actual steps, and once I work through them, and you guys all said about working them, I don't work the steps, I live them. I live them on a daily basis. Don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. I'm 36 years sober, I still go to three meetings a week, I do service at two of them, I'm involved within the group. I love Alcoholics Anonymous. I personally, and I'm known as Billy the Post, I would not do anything knowingly to hurt Alcoholics Anonymous because it changed and saved my life. Now, I've been in meetings like this, bigger than this, and other people come up to this rostrum and say, I owe my life to Alcoholics Anonymous. And I had a whole share back from the floor, I'm so grateful I owe my life to Alcoholics Anonymous. And then the secretary will say, can I have two people to wash up? And nothing. I, I just don't understand that. You know, I really don't. If I owe my life to this fellowship, and for me this is the most important thing in my life, then I need to give something back. I need to get, I've always been involved in service. David B, who, who, I know Wayne very well. David B was my sponsor, my first sponsor, and he died. Sponsored me for 19 years. And I got another sponsor. I had him for a year and he died. I got another sponsor. I had him for a year and he died. I got another sponsor. I had him for a few years and he died. I'm looking for the fifth sponsor. No, no, no one wants, I can see no one wants a job. Okay. No, I've got a current sponsor at the moment and, He's been my last one for the last 10 years, you know. And that's, for me, this is what this is about, about having a bit of fun, a bit of laughter, you know. I've had, I know how to be miserable. I know about that stuff. I know how to be miserable, quite simply. Go in any pub in the world and you walk in, you always know the alcoholic table because they'll all be talking and no one will be listening. That's exactly what it was like for me, exactly. And I was drinking the pubs that you wiped your feet sort of on the way, on the way in rather than on the way out. You know, that's how they were, you know, and it was horrific. And I don't want to go back to that. But the recovery for me is about what I do. Not what I say. I've been up there and I've done this, I've done this for a long time. I can stand up here and tell you stories and I can quote the book. That just means I've got a good memory. You know, happy, joyous and free, page one, free, free. If you want to know, I can quote all the book and all that, but that's not for me what it's, it's what I do. 
What's my behaviour like? What am I like in the world at large? You know, when I got into Alcoholics Anonymous, and don't suggest anybody else does this, but this was a fact. I just come back off a seem to be a thing with barmaids when we are not. I went on this last week's drinking away on stolen money, wife and children in London, me off with a barmaid. And when I came back, my wife had to challenge me because she was a member of Alana. And she challenged me because I had all love bites down in it. She could do nothing else. Now, I told my wife everything. Everything I could lay out to because I thought, my marriage is over, I'm finished, I'm off. I don't know where I was going, but I was off. Anyway, when I finished this story, you know, it won't mean anything to you guys, but it did to me. When I finished this story, she said, what do you want to eat? That was her only word. She said, even to this day, she don't know where the words come from. And we're still together. We've been married 40 years. Just gone. May, we've married 40 years. Um, on, on our 30th anniversary, we went back and done our vows again. We got married again. So I've made two mistakes in my life. We're both with the same woman, so I suppose that's okay. Um, and, and things that have happened to me beyond my comprehension, I don't understand. Things that I've been asked to do. I've been asked to be involved with Alcoholics Anonymous. I've done service in, in, in certain things. When we had our, our, our 40th anniversary, it was in the Dorchester Hotel. Me and my wife went to the meeting, to the, the, the 1987 that was. We went to the, the, the Dorchester Hotel. And Mike, Mike, those who are old enough remember Mike Yarwood did the comparing and he was the comedian at the time. You know, uh, but that, that, and I still got the ticket, 33 quid back in 1987 was quite a lot of money if those are old enough to remember. Yeah, uh, and, and I think back on a bit further on from that, 97, I was involved in Blackpool. We had 8,000 of us on the beach. 8,000. We actually built an amphitheatre on the beach. We didn't think we could do it, we did. We put 10,000 chairs on the beach in Blackpool. And we had 8,000 of us there. And my job on the committee was to find the speakers. And people come from all around the world. All around the world. Unbelievable people come from everywhere. And that's the love I saw in Alcoholics and Us. The unconditional love that I like to talk about a lot. For me, that's what this is about. The unconditional love in my life, you know. And I've had things happen to me that I just don't understand. I really don't. You know, when I was younger, obviously, and my sponsor did say if I took the steps, probably I wouldn't get any grey hair. So I don't know that I did that very well. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, but I do remember these things. that Back then I was younger. I was, so I was 24 years of age when I got sober. I'm now 60. I've been retired 10 years. Although I still work harder now than I did when I retired. The reason I'm known as Billy the Post, 35 years on the post office. One job, that's it. I didn't get sacked. I don't know why. I had 97 days off one year. 97 days off. My last year's drinking, this is fact. But I'll tell you something, I didn't miss a Friday. Not one. I got paid cash. Never missed a Friday. I miss Tuesday or Thursday quite often, and sometimes Monday as well, but never Fridays. And... You know, 97 days, you take the weekends onto that and then you take out the six weeks holiday. I don't think I, I did an awful lot that year and they actually called me up and complained and I thought they had a damn cheek. Like, how dare they complain about my timekeeping? You know, but how sick was I? I just didn't understand, you know. And, and for me, it's just doing this stuff on a daily basis and I keep thinking about it. Don't listen to what I say. Watch what I do. What's my behaviour like? How do I drive the car? You know, I don't have to do that. You know, I've got no guns up on my windshields and I don't give everyone the finger and you know all that stuff that goes up. I don't have to do that. I don't have sober end by the way I drive. In fact, recently I got actually done for speeding. I was going because Lulu was laughing because the girl I was in the car with she said if you took the handbrake off or you, the car would go faster. I'm the slowest driver I know. And I was going to, I was doing thirty six in the thirty and I got I had to go on these speed awareness courses. Which she <laughs> thinks she thinks is hilarious. You know. But that's that's okay, you know. And I was able to do that, you know. And now I've got children. When I got sober, my children were three and one. And I was told you David B was my sponsor. And I was about six months sober-ish. Around about six, four, six months sober. And I had the flu. Man flu, of course. I don't do the silly flu. It's like man flu. Anyway, I was feeling very, very sorry for myself. And he was on the phone. And the next thing, he appeared at my house. He appeared at my house. And he had two bags of sweets with my kids, three and one. 24 years of age, three and one. My first thought, where's mine? <laughs> and, you know, he knew me, David, because he had a bag of sweets with me. And he did, he gave me, and when I opened it up, it was a sweet dummy. <laughs> Which was good, because I was able to laugh at Billy. Able to laugh at myself. And I've been out to do that ever since I've been in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, if you're new, stick around, because this is the best deal. But I would suggest you go for gold. I've always had a sponsor in my life. I've always done service. I've always tried to give something back. But it's how I, how I for me, it's like how I live my life. Because, you know, it's, it's okay doing it in here and talking to you guys about it. What am I like out there? 
What am I like when I leave here? What am I like when I'm in the queue in Tesco's? You know, and it's 10 deep, and the lady in the front's got a checkbook out, and I'm in a hurry. What am I like then? These things I always gauge myself on. But what's my delay behaviour like? Because I can talk the talk. Can I walk the walk? Different argument from me. You know, I did the very first ever Vision for You chair, which I don't even know, I don't even know if Wayne was in the first year. Vision for You, which then became the Joys, and then became the Rose, and it's gone on and evolved and evolved. But that was back in the Chelsea College, that's some years back. You know, so watching it over the years, it's been fascinating to see it come and go and change and move on and all the people, and I spoke at the Plymouth Convention a few times. So I know a lot of people that I did down there. What I like about today, I don't know anybody. I know a few faces in me, but I don't know many people, now, which is brilliant, because I get my anonymity back. It's okay today, you know what I mean? And be able to do that stuff. Love and gratitude for this alcoholic are actions. Don't tell me, show me. Because I've heard the words, I've seen it. I've seen people come up and do chairs like this, and then when I watch them after for hours, I say, you just shared all that stuff, but your behaviour don't match that. Because I hear what you say, even though I watch what you do, and it don't match. You know, and I get this thing, when people speak with a heart, about this fellowship, what a tremendous fellowship. This is the best deal in town, mate, I tell you. There's nothing better than this, but I want a gold recovery. I ain't setting for no second-rate stuff. I want a gold recovery, and if I want that, then I have to do the stuff. I have to do the work. It's simple. And I sponsor a lot of people now. I've probably, uh, probably about 100 step fives in my time, but they're sacred. Listen to people's step fives. It's sacred. And I've heard everything. Most of them are the same, very similar. I've heard them. The only thing I haven't heard is cannibalism. So if you've got that, maybe that's about... I've heard the lot from one thing, and it's okay. You know, I'm a sick bunny trying to get well. And I didn't know that at the time. So it's coming here and seeing the, and the love. The love that, you know, you see a broken, beaten person come through the door. And you see when a few, a few days, just the, you know, three, six weeks down the line, you see a little light come on their eyes. And things, things start to change. You see people start to get well. That stuff is, is, is priceless. Seeing it. I've never met anything stronger than that. And God, for me, is unconditional love. You know, I don't think about around that. It's for me. And I've been in meetings when I've heard an American in London say, he said he believed in the gospel according to Luke Skywalker. And everyone laughed, and I thought, well, why not? You know, it's a false if That's what you believe in. Good, bad, evil, it doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter what I believe, providing I trust what I believe. And today I do, you know. And so I've got grandchildren now. I've got a little grandson who's nearly five. I've just had a little granddaughter, about seven. Brilliant stuff being able to be there and the trust and the love that weren't there before. I had a sponsee, I had a sponsee down in uh, uh, Buckingham and he was going to get married. And I tell this story quite often because it just blows me away. And he's going to get married and, it, and his girlfriend rang me and said, because her dad died of this illness, both her brothers died of this illness, mum was a member of Alcoholics and I was as well. And I, she rang me and said, I've got something to ask you, Billy. I said, what's that, Lynette? She said, I'm getting married to Lindsay. I said, yes, I know. She said, I'd like you to give me away. Where do you get that stuff from? Where does that stuff come from? It can only come from the love and the trust. And I'm the kind of guy you couldn't trust with anything. I would have said yes to everything and done absolutely nothing. I'd, my name would have been on everything. Yeah, sort that. No, sort it. No, done. It's all right. No, leave it to me. O- organised. And I would have done absolutely nothing. Said everything and did nothing. For me, this is a program of action. This is definitely for this alcoholic. And I'm speaking to that Billy program of action, having a sponsor and I've never run my sponsor every day he'd drive it, it'd, it'd kill me if I did I've never done that, I didn't even with David you know, because this was before the days of the visions and the joys and all that stuff You know, I used to go over there quite often and I got a few resentments, especially when he got another sponsor, because I was, Billy was his first one, but he, he drank again, soldier Billy, and I was his first sponsor David, and then the second one came along and he got in the front seat of the car my seat <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't happy about that he actually got in my seat, it wasn't <laughs> so a little bit miffed off. But, you know, it's seeing that, isn't it? And seeing the laughter and seeing the, you know, and I've been so alcoholic now, so I've been best man at people's weddings and I've been asked when I was younger, of course not so much now, but to be godparent of people's children and stuff and the girl that I gave away. This stuff comes from, from the love of alcoholics and honest. I should be dead. I should be either dead or locked up. You know, and today I'm not. Today I'm free, I can do what I want, I can go where I want. You know, and, and that's okay today. And, and again, I know for me it's about for me it's about service. It's about giving something back. If I did this for 180 years, I won't be able to pay you back what you've given me. You know, so what I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a really, really happy customer. Uh, I'm off. <laughs> and again, 
This mobile's always throwing me because it's, um, you know, at the end of the day for me, it's about showing up and doing what I say. And if I say I'm going to do something, then there's a damn good chance I'll do it. There is a damn good chance I'll do it. Because if I say I'll do something, I have to think carefully about that. I hear people say they say yes to everything in AA. I couldn't. If I said yes to everything in AA, I wouldn't do nothing else. I spoke at the National Southern Convention last week. I spoke at the convention the week before, before that. I was at another convention. I wasn't speaking, thank God, before that. I love alcoholics and illness. You guys understand. My wife doesn't. You know, she understands the illness because three years of my drinking and she, 21 years of age she was, wanted to take her life. She wanted to kill herself. That's what my illness does to people. You know, it's a great remover. Alcoholics Anonymous is a great restorer. You know, when I first got here, I think, I, in my head, I thought, you're nice people, but you don't really understand. I thought, you don't really, really understand. And this day I was in this meeting and this lady was sharing this that the husband was coming in, giving her a drink, putting the ice in it. She was drinking it. And, it, and she was still getting drunk, and he couldn't work this out for the life of him. Now, I never did this because it wasn't this bright, but she was getting a bottle of vodka and putting it in the ice tray and freezing it into vodka cubes. So when she, he was putting the ice back in, it melted back, and she was getting a vodka like that. But I never did that, but at least I started to see you understood and thought the same way that I thought. You know, because Marty, there was a you know, there was mad up here. There was a committee going on. There was all this stuff going on up here, and today that's gone. You know, when I first came in, it was like this big, you know, high. now it's very much, you know, and there again, my, my defects are still there, they have gone. They're all there. And every, I've, I've always de- referred to my defects as little gas jets. Every now and one will pop up, and down it goes. Now one will pop up, <laughs> they're, they're never going to go away, but I don't have to act out on them today. I don't have to act out on my defects. You know, which is good, Sam, you know. And having a God and, and being able to do these things, being able to be there for people. And I've done this, and I promise you, as I've been in meetings when I've seen the tramp come through the door, shaking and smelling, and you know, and I've been the only one to go up to him. You know, and I think, well, where, where's this love we talk about? You know, don't know who it is. This I'm talking about a lot of years ago. You know, and a young lady walked through the door, and there's 40 people one about. You know, there's a difference. You know, this doesn't. This, it's an equal opportunity illness, isn't it? This don't care who it takes. This would this would kill anybody. And Jenny. The Duchess had said it earlier, didn't she? Exactly. This is a killer illness. This does kill people. You know, and I've had so much fun and so much banter in my life. You know, I get phone calls and people. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life coming here. The best thing I've ever done by my own, you know. And I've got my daughter's, my daughter's 33 now, my sobriety baby. She was, you know, I've never seen me drink. She was a school teacher. When I was, when I was, when I was first in, again, when the, before this David B incident with the, the sweets, my kids were three and one, as I said. And my, do- my little children, they were playing. I'm a nosy alcoholic, so I wanted to see what they were up to. And they were playing in my front room. And Wayne's probably heard this story before. But they were playing in this doll's tent. And I don't know, because I looked in to see what my two children were playing, because mum was going to Alan and dad was going to Alcoholics and others. And my kids were not playing mums and dads, they weren't playing nurses and doc- you know, doctors. My two kids at three and one were playing, going to meetings. Yeah. So I could see then, I actually could see then that you guys, you know, and I blame you guys for this, you had started to trust that my father. Even at that age, I could see, in fact, my daughter, yeah, Christ, I just remember Monday, she's 40. She'd be 40 on Monday. You know, again, when she was three, my son was one, he's 38. So they've grown up with alcohol. They love this fellowship. There's a dance on, they'll come to it. And they know there's no one going to be fighting, there's no one going to be sick, there's no aggravation going on. You know, they, they, and even at the Millennium, we had a fancy dress one in London and they chose to come for that rather than go anywhere else. Because they know Alcoholics Anonymous is safe. You know, and that's the, the, the beauty of this fellowship, is broken, beaten people coming in. You know, if you're anything like me and my drinking, and I ain't going to tell you all about that, because it doesn't matter where I drank, how much I drank, it's what it did to me at the end. And the fact that I couldn't show up. I promised them all kinds of stuff and I couldn't. And I'm talking back, <laughs> it's a long story, but I'm talking back when Light and Bitters were one and eightpence, or one and sixpence. And those probably before pre decimalisation, you could actually get nine Bacardi and Coach for a pound and threepence in today's money. You know, I think it's God knows how many, how many older faces are smiling, because <laughs> they probably remember it. You know, and, and that's moved on today, hasn't it? That is, it's certainly moved on. But this for me, is about showing up and doing the loving thing, doing the right thing. The things that all my sponsors have showed me and taught me, the love they showed me, 
you know, and, and the way, I, and I've seen their, their example, I'm following their example. You know, for me, again, and I've, I mean, I was saying to the girls on the way, if I start banging on about the concepts and everyone's scratching their heads, you know that I'm drying up. So I'm not going to do that. But, but it, it's, it's just, I love the history of AA. I love it. I love the, when you look through back and what, and I met some, I met Lois Wilson. And back in the eighties, I met Bill's wife, you know, because me and my mate, Big Tony, they said, when she comes downstairs, everyone wants to touch her. So we look after her. So even one of us, the either side of Lois, she wanted to meet everybody. And that meeting I told you about in 97, there was a guy there called Cersei Wells, 51 years sober, because they did a sobriety campaign. And Tex Brown was 50 years sober. These guys, and, and Cersei and Bill actually made the first set of traditions and framed them and given them to the Cleveland Convention in 1950. So they're things that I love about this fellowship and seeing that stuff and seeing, you know, and, and when I think back to Bob and Bill, they I'm watching for these lights here, when I think about Bob and Bill, they were, all they had was each other. And they could see that just two drunks talking to each other. They didn't have meetings, they didn't have sponsorship, they didn't have phone service like we've got now. Intergroups, regions, telephone offices, GSOs, they had none of that, all they had was each other. You know, how do you present that to the world? How do you do that? I mean, it's so clever. If you actually unpeel this stuff and look at it, it's blinding, absolutely blinding how they unpeeled this stuff and how it took off and how it's starting to work. Fabulous, fabulous stuff that, that these two, two guys, just two drunks talking to each other, you know, and, and seeing that and taking it on to other people. And, and Bill was ready to rock and roll. Bill was off, mate. Bob said, whoa, hold on, come in, <laughs> slow down. No, no, we can't have hospitals. We can't be counsellors. We can't do this, that, the other. But Bill was ready to go. He was ready to go, I tell you. And Bob had to slow him down and say, whoa, hold on a minute, slow down here. That's not what this is about. You know, and, and Bill wanted to change it. He was about to sign up to it. And the, the, the people in them day said, Bill, no, you can't do that, mate. We can't make this professional. Anybody, <laughs> I'm being told to shout nearly, <laughs> anybody can come to my company. No one can be banned. No one can be barred. You know, and I think that's fantastic. That anyone's welcome here, no matter who you are, don't matter what you think of me. I actually don't care what you think of me. And I thought I'd never be able to say that. I don't care. You know, but are, what I think of you is important. You know, and, and a couple of people shared it earlier. Constant thought of others. Constant. I don't know if you've ever looked that word up. Constant. All the time. Not now and again. Not every, you know, but constant thought of others. You know, and that's, that's a, that's a tall order. And the just for the day card and, all these things that I try to live on a daily basis. I'll show you this and I'll shut my face. <coughs> Criticise not one bit. Not find fault with anything or anybody. Oh my good God. I can walk outside the door and I'm off. Look at the state of his shoes, they're green. I mean that's, you know. So, I'm never going to get perfect, thank God. All I can do is do this at that. God bless you for listening to me and, and, and it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Shut my face. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.